Well, good morning, my friends. Oh, actually, I should say good afternoon. <laughs> it's a little later than I thought it was. Today, we're going to look at a four-sided stitch. And this is going to go, of course, under the Book of Knowledge, and it will be labeled four-sided stitch for those that uh, want to use this. This is often used as an edge stitch. It's often used as filling in some uh, drawn thread work, but it's a good stitch to have. You can use it also in your hard hanger embroidery if you so choose to do that. So let's deconstruct it a little bit so that we can um, understand how it's formed. It is, I'm going to first demonstrate it on a piece of hard hanger fabric, and then I will demonstrate it on a piece of um, either even weave or linen. I have to look what I have in my pile here um, so that you can see it actually is a stitch that you can pull and use in a pulled thread, not pull. You can pull it to distort the threads in the fabric. You're not pulling any threads out, but you are distorting the threads in the fabric. It really is not a hard stitch. It's really pretty straightforward and I kind of have it broken down into the steps here. You're going to bring your needle up at one and you're going to go down at two. So that's side one. Side two, you're going to go up to the top corner and bring your needle up and go down at number four. So that makes the second side. The third side, you're going to bring your needle up at five and go down at six. And then you are going to bring your needle back up where you started in the top uh, left corner. And that will again start your next block. So you would repeat that. Okay, you would bring it up at seven. So let's look at it a little closer. These are the four sides one, two, three, four five, six, seven. Okay, let's look a little closer. So how does that shape up? Okay, here we go. Dashed lines are your, your, is your thread behind the fabric. Solid lines are your thread on top of the fabric. All right, so you're going to start here at one. You're going to come bring your needle up here at one. And I, I will tell you, I like to do this as a sewing method as opposed to stick and stab. However, that being said, it can be done either way. So come up at one. I go down at two and bring my needle up at three. So you can see we traveled across the back here, up at three. I now go down at four, travel across the back come up at five. Okay. Go across the top and down at down back at number two, which is actually number six. And then swing up to back up to number three, which now again becomes number one. And we'll start all over again. So I would go up at one, down at two, up at three, down at four, up at five, down at six, up at one. And I would keep working across the row that way. And then you will be able to jump down and maybe do a second row or whatever direction you choose to travel. You just keep your sequence the same, up at one, sorry, up at one, down at two, up at three, down at four, up at five, down at six, up at three, which again is now number one. So that's the sequence of how we, how that stitch is constructed. So let's look at actual stitching it. Okay, I have a piece of hard hanger fabric here today. <clears throat> And that's what I'm going to use. And as I said, I prefer 
to do this stitch as a sewing stitch. However, you can do it as a stick and step. Okay, so I am going to start my stitch. I'm going to use an away and just keep that out of the way. So now I am up at one. And I'm going to use my blocks on the hardanger as if they were linen threads. So I'm going to count down four. One, two, three, four. So now I am down at two and come up at three. All right, so let's follow that along here. So I'm down at two, up at three. And then I pull the thread out. Let's start that again. <laughs> oh, up at one. Okay. Technical issues, my friends. Technical. One, two, three, four. Down at two. Try to hold this so that you can see both. Up at three. And don't pull it all the way through like I did. Okay. So now we're going to go down at four. And up at five. So we went down at four, up at five. Down at six. And back up at one. So now we've completed three sides. If this was you were only going to do one, of course, you would go back down here at five and be done. But we're going to make a row across. And like I said, I'm not pulling it hard at this point. I will get a piece of a different piece of fabric to pull it to show you how to pull them tight. So in order to keep going, I'm going to go over here and I will be coming. So this is now one again, and this one becomes two. So we're back here at the beginning, one and two, three. And four, up at five, down at six, and back up at one. Okay, so now we've completed four sides on this one. We have three sides on this one, and we start again down at two, up at three, down at four, up at five, down at six, back up at one. Okay, and then you just keep repeating. So that's your four-sided stitch. Okay, so let's look at it on a piece of fabric where we can pull it tight. So let me find in my little stash of fabric here. Okay, I was experimenting a little bit on this, so <laughs> we'll just um, this out of the way. So now you have the sequence down. All right, let's see. I think you can see this okay. All right, so we're going to come up at one. One, two, three. Down at two. Up at three. So now is when we want to pull. 
Now I should have anchored that. So now you can pull down at three, up at four. And then you can pull. Three, four, five, and six. Now this one's going to be a little not so pulled so well because uh, it's the first one. I didn't anchor my thread, so I didn't have really anything to pull against. So now I'm going to repeat it again. And you see, I just use my thumb and I pull. Okay, one. And you have to come up, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Do you see how there, be, there comes a rhythm? And I'm really pulling here. So this is one, two, But you see how that distorts your fabric threads? And you can use this just to fill in an area. You can use it to go around an edge. Now I'm going to switch directions here. Okay, so instead of going here, because I want to go down this way, I'm going to go in this one and up in this one. And then I can turn and go this way. Now I'm kind of doing it a little backwards here. Let me go this way. Sorry, turned it the wrong way. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to go and then I just go back into my my sequence of Okay, so this is how I would go around a corner. Okay. So this does make a like if you're if you've done I don't know, say you did a you've done an embroidered doily or you've um you um did some cut work, say in a corner of a napkin, and you could use this to finish off your edge. You could actually make a hem and use this as part of your stitch your two layers together as a hem. Is another useful way for this stitch. So I mean there are many places that you can use it, places that it's called for, um, but that is how you, a lot of times it's used as a um, border in a sampler. So now you know how to do a four-sided stitch and turn the corner. So if you have any questions, as always, leave a comment, send me an email. I would be happy to answer anything that I can, and uh, I will see you 
next time. Take care, have a great day, and I happy stitching.